When The Departed was selected as part of the Film Review Open Challenge, two thoughts came into my mind. Why couldn't something lighter be chosen? And, well, at least I own this one. I've only seen The Departed once or twice, but yet I still own it on Blu-ray. Mainly because I remember enjoying it, but it's not my normal genre, so I haven't seen it in a long time. But why is it I haven't come back to this until now? With Martin Scorsese directing this crime thriller, a stellar all-star cast and four Oscar wins under its belt, The Departed should be a sure thing for critical acclaim, right? Here's my review of The Departed. The story focuses on three characters, Frank Costello, Colin Sullivan and Billy Costigan. Frank has been running organised crime for decades. Sullivan, recruited at a young age by Costello, becomes a respected and well-liked state trooper and mole for Frank. Billy, on the other hand, is offered a chance to infiltrate Costello's organisation upon graduating the police academy. His handlers, Captain Queenan and Lieutenant Dignam, are concerned that Billy's family history of criminals means he wouldn't last as a state detective, but he'd fit in well with Costello's crew. After a prison sentence and parole, Billy meets French, Costello's number two, after glassing the wrong person in Costello's bar. He then meets Frank directly after beating two goons from Providence, trying to collect some protection money. Frank offers Billy a chance to work for him, but he's concerned that despite the Costigan family history, Billy's father never dabbled in crime. As part of his parole, Billy has to see Madeline Madden, a psychiatrist who has no idea about Billy's undercover work. The first session goes badly, with Billy expressing how he just wants Valium or he'll blow his brains out. Madeline recommends another psychiatrist after relenting to his request, but Billy still wants to see her, inviting her for coffee. The two end up sleeping together much, much later on, despite Madeline mentioning that she was moving in with her boyfriend. Sullivan, however, is put in charge of a team to catch Costello selling military-grade microprocessors and just so happens to be the one dating Madeline. Sullivan, in his position, tips off Frank over and over again, with Billy feeding information to Queenan at the same time. This comes to a head during a sting operation where Frank sells the microprocessors to the Chinese. Frank, by way of Sullivan, and Queenan, by the way of Billy, realise that each has a mole in their ranks. Both come close to revealing their identities, including Costello's men cornering Billy and Queenan's meeting at an abandoned building. Billy escapes without detection, but Queenan gets thrown from the building. Dignam resigns after Sullivan demands he gives up his informant, meaning no one in the police department knows who Billy is. Sullivan uses Queenan's phone to contact Billy, which then leads to the rather unusual situation of a rat ratting to a rat. It's around this time that Sullivan finds out that Costello is a protected FBI informant, and so during a drug bust, he kills Frank and claims credit for catching him. Billy is called in, and so Sullivan now knows who the mole is. Billy works it out after seeing an envelope with all of Frank's employees' personal details, including his own, which was given to Sullivan to search on the police database. Billy disappears and sends an audio CD to Sullivan, with conversations between Frank and Sullivan, as well as Frank and Billy. Madeline, however, intercepts it, and after confronting Sullivan, he goes to meet Billy, but gets ambushed. In quick succession, the following happens. Sullivan states he erased Billy's encrypted identity file. Detective Brown, a classmate of Billy's at the academy, arrives at the request of Billy. Trooper Barrigan arrives, shoots Billy and Brown, revealing himself to be a second mole for Frank. Barrigan is then shot by Sullivan, leaving him the only one who knows all the details of this affair. Life appears to go on, with a pregnant Madeline not talking to Sullivan at Billy's funeral, but when Sullivan gets home, he finds Dignam waiting for him. Dignam then shoots Sullivan and walks away. Despite the captivating plot, this film is really long. At two and a half hours, it takes an investment of time and indeed concentration to fully enjoy this. The story is great, and there are many times during my viewing that I didn't want to pause to take notes. It's thrilling, simple to understand, but in-depth enough to be really layered. That said, pacing is a real issue for me. The first hour is fast-paced and gives the right amount of information to build us into the world. Frank's ideologies are told from the start, and we know what's happening quickly and in great detail. I can honestly say that this is one of the best opening hours of any movie for which there hasn't been any prequels. The second hour, however, grinds to a halt, and not much happens to progress the story, short of several instances of Sullivan and Billy dealing with their dual tasks or identities respectively, and the deterioration of Billy's psyche. 
The last 30 minutes then goes back to the original pace, wrapping things up well with twists one after another which don't convolute or water down the preceding two hours. The story is excellent, it's brutal, sharp and well rounded, but I take issue with how close Madeline and Billy get. There needs to be something there for the finale to work, but by sleeping with Billy, which I feel comes out of left field, her character as a moral compass, as the grounded stable person is lessened. The main trio of Jack Nicholson, Leonardo DiCaprio and Matt Damon do stellar jobs in what they're portraying. Nicholson is almost always sinister in whatever he plays and so he's a perfect choice for Frank Costello. Matt Damon's work as someone who has it all and keeps his cool, mostly, is done well too. Sullivan comes across as someone who knows how the world works and is happy to go along with it but could still coldly change things when something unexpected happens, so that his identity remains intact. It's Leonardo DiCaprio though who shines brightest. His portrayal of someone struggling with who he is as opposed to the job he's doing feels natural and it's compelling throughout. DiCaprio shows how much Billy Costigan wants to get out of his family's shadow and do what's right at any cost, including using that family connection to infiltrate Costello's organization. By the end though, all he wants is his identity back, and once again he's willing to do whatever it takes to do it. Seriously, how did it take until 2016 for DiCaprio to win an Oscar? I find Mark Wahlberg's character way over the top. Every sentence is either swearing, threatening to fight, or a combination of the two. But his loyalty to Queen and by killing Sullivan at the end is admirable, so he's not a total write-off. Ray Winston, on the other hand, should never have been cast as a Boston gangster. It's so clear that he's not from there. He's best as a London-based hard man, or giving the odds in an in-play game. All right, boys. Oui. All, All right. right. The Departed won four Oscars, Best Picture, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Film Editing, and Best Director. Martin Scorsese gets a lot of plaudits for his direction, and here it's on display for all to see. The use of shadows to mask Frank's identity at the beginning to build the mythos, the switching at just the right moments between characters to show immediate consequences. It's part of the reasons why the first hour is so good. The only thing I can criticise is the use of time passing. Until a character mentions how long has passed since the last scene, you have no idea whether hours, days, weeks, or even months have passed. And sometimes significant events like Sullivan and Madeline's engagement have happened off screen. It's jarring and it makes you think you've missed something. The Departed is a brilliant film that deserves its acclaim. I know the reason now why I enjoyed it the first time, but I also know the reason why I'd only seen it once. It takes a lot of concentration to fully enjoy and get into. It's worth the effort and it deserves your respect. So if this is your kind of film and you're willing to give it your whole attention, give it a watch. Next up for the film review open challenge is Snatch. Until then though, thank you very much for watching.